Mo hasn't seen her grandmother for a while now, but Granny would never make a scene about it. Yet Mo feels anxious stopping by, not because she doesn't like her. She likes the old woman too much. The deep waters around this island change color every season, teeming with life of the most curious creatures. The ventilation system grew through her house, wrecking her bedroom, study, and kitchen. She could have moved away, but she wasn't willing to concede a single inch. Hopefully, she hasn't blocked the valve with her morbid laboratory. Miri is not here, the old woman says, but that is not why you've come. Mo tries to tell her how dire it is, how Under and the others have succumbed. How she needs to do what must be done. But her grandmother merely smirks behind her mask. Now look at you. How important you've become. People are counting on you. Yes, yes. Another chuckle behind the air filter. I have something very important for you to do as well. Would you be so kind as to do me a favor? A favor? she calls it. It may as well be in order. Granny has always had her way of getting what she wants. Old companions, the grandmother says, that I have held on to quite long enough. It's time to bring them home. Promise me. Moore's heart plunged into her stomach. She knew what Granny was implying. You do not decline a request like this. Moore promised. Grandma was never interested in anything made by the giants. 
Lifeless metals and cold steel, she called it. She preferred spending time with the fungus, breeding colorful, voracious new strains. Moore had always looked up to her grandmother, devoting her hours to caring for the dead and the living alike. An enigmatic and stubborn woman, who was far smarter than many assumed. Mamofesti and Kaba are connected by a bridge that Moore has never fully crossed. The walk always seemed too long, and what lies beyond is what she dreads most. Just the one. disrespect for the dead if it saves the living Moore's hand clutches the gemstone in her pocket left behind by her older sister her heart is drowning in a deluge of goodbyes all of them equally real in Miri's unread letter.
more expected Kaba to be swallowed by the spores. So this episode comes as no surprise. However, she did not expect to feel so at home here. where we bring our dead, where we surrender their bodies to the blight, a place too virulent to visit, so we mourn at home over sculpted effigies. Moor finds no solace in these rituals, but she has a promise to keep.
For all their hard work, the giant's machines are not welcome in these hallowed grounds.
was too small to fully understand what was happening during the exodus, but she saw what the poison was doing to the people around her, plaguing the mind with visions, corroding and eating the flesh. She couldn't bear to watch person after person disappear from her life, so she hid in the networks below. Far away from it all, she never found out exactly who succumbed to the poison and who made it off the island but it barely matters to her when they're all still gone. Most of Maul's family is still here, however. They couldn't leave their little Maul behind. She is proud now to have been tasked to protect them by virtue of the knowledge and power she found. For when she went below and found the fabled giants, when she befriended them as the only human in generations, they forged the Omni-Switch for her and made her their apprentice. She spent years confined in the underbelly of these islands, just so the surface could shine. She hopes her family is proud as well.
The brothers once walked the surface. Many say they built the world with their hands. They were inventors and explorers, never minding the tiny humans between their feet, living in their tiny houses and tiny streets. When the blight first came and humanity fell into ruin, they went underground to find a solution. Their ingenuity and their toil saved the world above, but also bound them in the deep below. Miri has two figurines in her home, a recent addition, but she has not told more who she is mourning. Miri has told more that she has a figure ready for her too, just in case. How many times has Miri thought of taking that figure here? All the times more would disappear below. All the times more was gone for months without contact. Miri not knowing each time whether her little sister would come up again. Not knowing for months whether the catacombs or the blight had finally taken more for good. Granny's decided that she's grieved enough. Two giants still struggling for air, only half of the engines running, only half of her world protected, but at least this promise she has now fulfilled. Thank <laughs> you. 
She knows she has a pressing task to finish. The one in the physical world. But maybe, in this place, where time has no meaning, she can stay for a moment and rest. <laughs>
Moore's grandmother says, thank you, and asks for one more favor. Would you sit with this old woman and listen to the birds and the water? Granny remembers how people from far away would visit Beva and Leuza to have a few days of peace, a few days of nothing but islands, and how lucky little Moore was to have a lifetime of it before the exodus, before her calling. Moore responds she only has a minute, but her grandmother smiles, patting the empty seat beside her. Then... A minute of islands will do. The foul taste of stale air is even stronger here. Enough distractions. It's time to wake Under from his sleep. Under, the giant slumbering beneath Mamofesti, is the oldest of the four brothers. Older not by years, but by centuries. A fitting guardian for the islands of the dead.
his throat making no sound, his chest frozen in place. Make haste, more. Maybe you haven't killed him yet. They say your youth was taken from you, but think of the years of good you could have done if the Omni Switch had found you earlier.
Nothing but a spasm. Pathetic. Try harder. Again.
need to get here as fast as possible. How could you let her distract you like that? Amda almost died because of your sentimentality. And Afla is as good as dead. Your grandmother, Miri. What help have they been? Whining to your face, talking behind your back. They secretly want you to fail. Maybe their pleas of concern. We're driven by ill will all this time. You are alone in this. You always were. And maybe it's better that way. 